All right, everybody. Good morning and welcome to Houston Oasis. We are glad that you are able to join us this morning for those that are joining us uh, in the Zoom chat. Also, for those of you that are out there at Facebook Live, we are so glad that you're able to join us. Um, if you uh, uh, are new to this Houston Oasis thing, we usually meet in person every Sunday, but during the coronavirus uh, stuff going on, we are trying out some virtual gatherings. And so, um, for those of you that are just discovering us, uh, we are a community of compassion and reason. And uh, we, uh, one of our core values is people are more important than beliefs. And so if those sound like things that are good to you, you're at the right Let's place. Let's go ahead and get on to our, uh, our main speaker today. Uh, our main speaker is Tamara Griffith from the Girls in Flight Training Academy. Tamara is the event coordinator and director of marketing for Girls in Flight Training. She is a commercial pilot, flight instructor, and A&P with her inspection authorization like her mother, and likely the only mother-daughter IAs. Tamara has been a corporate pilot, freight pilot, and has crossed both oceans, flown to, in, and around many other countries. And she is currently an independent flight instructor and also a mechanic with Fox Aviation International. Houston Oasis, let's welcome Tamara Griffith. Howdy, everybody. Nice to meet y'all. I'm new to this uh, oasis. I am up in the DFW area, uh, so not the same weather at all. I do have quite a few friends and quite a few pilots down in the Houston area, so I hopefully they've all joined in here at some point. So what is Gift Academy? We are called Girls in Flight Training. That is where Gift comes from, and it's about getting more women through the hurdles and becoming pilots. Um, so we get all kinds of girls or ladies, however, we, we, we started this because my dad will call, doesn't matter whether you're eight or 80, he will call you a girl. Uh, so it kind of just fit. Uh, he is a big part of our, uh, of our school, as you might call it, we're, we're kind of an event and a school at the same time. And it started with me and my mother. So I'm going to do a couple of screen shares so you can have some idea. So bear with me here. I'm a little slow on this. And what did it do? Let's see if it's, let's see if it's working. <laughs> and come on. Yes. And it's not doing anything or is it doing anything? There it is. Okay. So everybody see this, I hope. And let me see if I can find, you see our little line here. No, I don't believe so. Okay. Well, this may or may not work um, like I planned. Share screen. That's what I did. You know what? Forget Wait. it. <laughs> let me see. Let me see one more thing. Huh? Let me see. Let me try one more thing. Uh, let's see. I don't know why it worked earlier, so I don't understand why it's not working now. But, I, I, you know, it's, it's okay. not really important um we you know there is a picture of me and my mother you can go to our website girls in flight and see all of our pictures it's more of a community than it is all about flight training it started out and we'll go back to i don't know how many people are familiar with the women air service pilots program from the world war ii and we call them the wasps and they were in Sweetwater, Texas, uh, at Avenger Field, as they call the airport. They still call it that. There is a big museum there. And my daughter, I'm the second generation uh, pilot, as my daughter is also a, a pilot, my oldest daughter, I should say. And so during her flight training, she, we went to this museum. They had a big homecoming right after she soloed. And to meet all these wonderful ladies that they had brought in from World War II who flown every airplane out there uh, that was in World War II. Um, and we met this lady um, who was an Air Force uh, pilot. She was the first female B-1 bomber pilot. So we're introducing my daughter to her and thinking, oh, this is going to be impressive. This is a really cool woman, you know, to, to meet. My daughter should meet her. And during the process, we explained to her that my daughter had just soloed an airplane a couple of weeks before on her birthday. And we were telling her, you know, how many airplanes and everything. And this 
female bomber pilot who flies the B-1 bomber is like, I am so jealous of you. It stunned us, both me and my mother, as probably as my daughter was 16, she didn't really notice what was going on, but it stunned us. Why would she be jealous? And she was jealous because of the back support she had from her, you know, she didn't have the family support. We supported everything that my daughter was doing. And that was the biggest thing is when you don't have your inner network support, it's you find the struggle to be more so to get where you want to be. Um, if nobody understands what it is that you love to do, you're going to struggle. And that is what gift slowly became that source is like, why are more and more women, we found a study saying women were more likely to drop out of flight training. Okay, we're less than 7% of the entire commercial pilots for the US. So when you think, you know, there's pilots only make up 2% of the population and we only make up 7% of that 2%. And when you get into the mechanic world that I also live in, I'm less than 2% of that. <laughs> so it narrows the field down pretty carefully. Um, so it, we immediately is like, what's going on? Why are they the highest dropout rate? What can we do about it? Who's going to do something about it? And that's how me and my mother ended up in the creating this. And we had our very first event in 2011. 14 women showed up out of the blue. We thought, we thought we would just put a little blurb out there. Hey, we're hosting this free event. Come check us out. Oh, maybe a 300 mile radius. Basically everybody in Texas, maybe the edge of Oklahoma. We had a couple people from Houston. We had Michigan, Florida, California. We were blown away by 14 people coming from all over just for this free ground school that we were doing in August, June, July, August timeframe. Bad time in Texas, especially up in North Central Texas. 100 degree weather, airplanes don't like to fly. But it was an interesting, the first thing we noticed was this networking. We had these two variety of ages. One was in her 20s, one was in her 60s. One was a widow, the other one had never married yet. And they became best friends. And they are still communicating to this day here in 2020. It is amazing. And then, you know, that was 14 people showed up. The word got out <laughs> the very next year. We had 50% participants and we had to cut it off. So we can't, we can't afford you people. Uh, we didn't know where to put everybody. <laughs> but everybody came together as a group. We started doing, so these events, once a year we host this event. Um, we are starting to open it up to other places are hosting similar events. So it's a women only event, except for the flight instructors, and other volunteers might be the men. So I always tease the women. It's like, it's a women only event. The men you see are cooking or cleaning or teaching. So who doesn't want to see men cook and clean? <laughs> but that's kind of a running joke because they are some of our best supporters as much as the women are our biggest supporters. So, but it is a running joke because my dad doesn't cook or clean. <laughs> he tells us what to do. That's what he does really, really well. <laughs> but the whole process as we were doing so it more from trying to get women through aviation as starting to develop the networking gift has spun off multiple places on Facebook called lift ladies in flight training it spun off with a group called fast female aviators sticking together and we just kept it just kept spreading as more and more networks developed that we never had I never had as you know a young aviator 30 years ago when i got my license yes i'm, I'm dating myself here uh, my daughter she didn't even have that networking at 16 to 20 and now she's 26. Um, we get ladies from all walks of life from housewives to grandmothers uh, widows to uh, one, you know, we have had lawyers and CPAs and brain surgeons. You never know who is gonna walk through Gift Academy or learn to be a pilot. Uh, why be a pilot? You never know where it's gonna take you. It's all about networking. And sometimes it's just learning a new skill or getting over a fear. And so, it, you know, and it, it's kind of a unique because some of our women uh, there's one, she's not too far from the Houston area. Her name is Patty Shannon. She came to us, her husband brought her. 
I love her story. Her husband brought her in an airplane on the worst bumpy day flight. She says, you will come back and get me in a car. It's going to take me months to learn to fly. The end of this week event, she solos an airplane. Um, I wanted to share the picture, but she holds up her, we cut the tails of the shirt sometimes. And so she's holding up this shirt kind of like her little, her little cape. Fast forward just this past year, she officially got certified as a NICU nurse. So she's not actively being a pilot, but she now that changed their marriage because now her and the husband get together and they fly together with the whole family now. Uh, the kids actually learn to fly because she learned to fly. So now the husband could go on to do more flying. It became this thing, but she be partly because she took the flying, it encouraged her to go ahead and follow her original dream as a NICU nurse. Now she had a baby who was a NICU baby long time ago. Now he's graduating college, so she's doing this late in life. But if you think about it, we live to be 80, 90 years old most of the time. We better be planning for multiple careers, multiple education. So we go back to the networking. And there was a recent study in 2012, I believe. Um, it, I, I didn't realize it was so old, but I only heard about it last year. And it was women in networking. And kind of an unique, when we're dealing with male-dominated professions, like aviation, and it and just how it worked out, obviously, that women need what they call the network, but they need two networks. Everybody needs a basic network that's pretty broad, that's going to get you information about jobs, that's going to get you, you know, what is the, probably the best path, what is the best school to go to, these things. But uh, women tend to need what we call an inner network, and it may be anywhere from two or three people to five people or more, but it's this inner network that tells us sometimes the little details, hey, this company, they're really anti-female, you're not going to progress well in this one. This one here is a better one. Oh, they have that one employee. That's where your inner network comes in. And in the male-dominated, the men don't necessarily need it. And this study actually showed the men didn't need this because it's not really their hurdle. Now, I guess if they were to go into a female dominated environment like nursing, they probably need that inner network, but that wasn't studied. So I'd like to see that part of the study to, just to prove it. Um, but so that's where GIFT became all about the networking. And it became about the networking, not because we're, only networking aviation, but what else do we do in life? I've had car specialists. One runs a car talk radio, but she's a lady. She's big on Jeeps and she's fun to follow. Actually, she's down near Houston. She became best friends for somebody in California who was a grandmother who just wanted to finish her rating and we actually helped her finish it, which was our original goal of gift. And now she lives in Houston. So now they're friends that get to live next door to each other almost. I guess next door in the state of Texas is close enough. <laughs> but they, you know, this, you know, grew into something. We have women from Alaska. Uh, she's now a mom, three kids. Uh, but she, you know, she came to us, you know, not yet married, but she'd finished her uh, multiple degrees. I think she had a doctorate. I'm not entirely sure. I'm not going to start lying on that one. But, you know, but her, she had an uncle in the uh, forestry service there in Alaska. And that was her intended goal. She hasn't gone there yet, but that doesn't mean she's not doing it. So who doesn't want to go fly in Alaska? Uh, it would be interesting. I want to go fly in Alaska. Uh, one of these days. <laughs> so that's where GIFT is. And it's all about the networking. And they, as they've proven in this study, it's not about an internet work where everybody feels the exact same way. And I think this group actually incorporates this a little bit uh, of Oasis is you bring people from all kinds of backgrounds. And that is what GIFT is, is we're taking all kinds of backgrounds and giving you a completely new network. So you don't want people in your internet work that only think your way, that only fit in your little box and totally agree with you. You don't need yes, man. You need someone who's going to give you a, a different viewpoint. Someone who's going to call out saying, what did you think about it this way? You know, and, you know, or sometimes do something differently. Like, 
okay, she's a little different, and it's usually me. Uh, and then, but that makes you sometimes open up to something new. And if you open something to new, you've expanded your horizons and you become something else. And that's what gift is about a gift of wings. And so sometimes it, we're even just learning to be a private pilot or even the basics so that you can keep your son or daughter or a friend who's a pilot safer, even if you don't ever learn to fly. It's so that you can spread, you know, broaden your horizons, become more aware and help somebody else with their little network. Because even non-pilots will sometimes hear about this hey, this company's getting, buying an airplane. Do you think you'd like that job? They may have an in with that person that's looking to hire a pilot and you never know who you're going to meet. Well, it's the same thing. I, you know, as a pilot, I take that, you know, and as an instructor, it's networking from other communities, other types of communities that I have both become a better instructor and a better person because I even do what they call belly dancing. Okay, people have all kinds of ideas what belly dancing is. So both it's an educational, but as learning to be a belly dancer, and believe me, I'm not that good. Um, I spread my own horizons, but I can take that learning, ex my teaching experience and become a better learner, but I don't know who I'm going to meet. And actually, I've had a very interesting people who have turned me on to new places where I might be able to hawk my wares as an instructor. It's like, you can pick up new students. Who knew? Um, one of the things we learned at GIF was sometimes thinking outside the box. Now, y'all obviously all think outside the box. Y'all created this little interesting group. The whole point of being outside the box is to expand your own box. Well, some people need to open their box. Uh, I, I grew up in a very small town, so they still need to open their box. Um, but it's about recognizing there's a broader view of this box. Flying is about sometimes getting upstairs and realizing there is no borders. We all think about the borders of our cities. You don't see that flying. You don't know when you've crossed the border of a state. You don't know when you've crossed the border of a country, except by radio and you looked at your map and happened to see that you've crossed it. But it's not it's not drawn on that except for the red river sorry red river is a real obvious one <laughs> but we all use you know we, we can see broad reasons and we by taking in that information we become something else we become bigger than what we originally started and sometimes yeah that's probably your biggest thing as being a pilot is we're always growing we have to go have new experiences because that pilots become complacent Pilots become very uh, centered around one thing, and sometimes they need a, a little experience to, uh, of something that says, hey, this is going to be interesting. I take flying, um, you know, I take flying very seriously, and, but at the same time, flying is the most fun thing I can do. And so my job and my goal is to share that love so that I can, you know, maybe broaden your horizons a little further. But biggest thing I do with Gift Academy is about broadening your network and creating more networks with people who you would have never thought to meet, never imagined, uh, you know, becoming friends with somebody because they don't fit your normal box of who is acceptable ladies from who, you know, I can't even explain half of the people that have come, you know, I never imagined becoming good friends with people who are in belly dance world until I became, you know, started attending a class or two, became friends with one. Um, so, and then I found out they're some of our best students. Why? They're coordinated. Who knew? Uh, another one, I became more into the bands and music, not because I'm a musician, actually, I'm a terrible singer. I can barely play anything. But I love music and hearing it, mm -hmm. hearing several of my students were in bands, I started paying attention to bands. So I'm something beyond that. So now I have more music for listening on the airplane. <sighs> so that is what gift is all about is networking, not 
just flying. We become pilots. We want to help more women become pilots so that we can raise this 7% to 10% and someday it'll snowball into a 50%. We want to help the pilot shortage. But it is all about the networking and becoming more than what we started. And so if you have questions as to where to fly, where to come to our events, besides going to our website, and, you know, and checking us out. We're also on Twitter, Instagram. I'm all over Facebook. Most of that media is all me, unfortunately. So bear with us. Um, but my mother's all over it. We have our YouTube channel. That's a whole nother scary story. <laughs> and we keep going from there. And hopefully maybe I'll see a couple of those faces come learn to fly a little bit. So. Excellent. Thank you, Tamara. We appreciate it. And uh, what a great talk. I mean, not just, uh, I really like the parallels you made to, um, you know, not all of us necessarily want to be a pilot, but I really like the ideas of, of that as a way of breaking. Someone on our uh, Facebook Live had said, you know, um, flight, the example of flight is sort of a way of breaking out of our own boxes uh, and maybe trying something new. So, um, but I, I want to tell everybody here, if you've got some questions and comments for tomorrow, we're going to come back in about uh, 10 minutes and we're going to uh, have some Q&A. All right, everybody. Welcome back. Um, again, thanks to tomorrow for a great talk. And this is some time for questions and comments. And we'll see how many we can uh, get in here. I know we don't have a ton of time. Uh, but uh, tomorrow, I want to start with one that just came in, uh, or came in uh, from Lindsay on our Zoom group chat. She asked, where is your favorite place to fly in any destination suggestions for new pilots? Oh, that's a uh, tough one because, you know, there's, I probably try to find the beauty wherever I fly. Um, if you like deserts, Terralingua, Big Bend area, there's some great destination there. Um, another one is, you know, I love Port A, Port Aransas, and they have the great flying. And anything along the beach is always beautiful. Uh, I've flown over the sea, over the oceans, and I will say, you know, I enjoyed all of Europe, but Iceland is one of my favorites, actually, weirdly enough. So that's why I think I'm interested in Alaska right now. <laughs> Sounds beautiful. Um, so uh, for anybody that is in the chat here, we'll have to kind of unmute you if you have a question or comment. Uh, so if you, if you want to raise your, kind of wave your hand, if you have something that from your breakout room or a question for tomorrow that you'd like to say. Uh, and then Abhishek, if you, if you see somebody, right. holler at me. All right, I see uh, Ted's question here. Uh, uh, what planes do you fly? Uh, my favorite answer to that is whatever I can get my greedy little hands on. Um, <laughs> as a flight school, I currently have what they call Cessna 152s or two, little two-seat trainers. I have flown everything from the corporate jets, what we call a Citation Sovereign. It would carry about 10 people in what we would call better than first class accommodations. That's what I took around the world, uh, a couple of different directions, both twice actually. Um, then I've flown the mid-size prop jets, which are still corporate airplanes, turboprops. Everybody thinks they're old, but actually turboprops are more efficient. Uh, my parents still fly those. And I've flown crop dusters and I have flown trainers and the little, what they call the stole aircraft, some of them that are doing little stunt flying. Probably people have seen some videos where it looks like an airplane is hovering and landing as short as possible. And that is exactly what they're doing. It's a contest. Those are a lot of fun. That country stuff. So whatever I get my greedy hands on. <laughs> I guess I see another one. Uh, what, the, what is the poster behind you? Uh, this poster probably back here is actually what we call a sectional. It is an aerial map VFR visual flight rule map. So we, it's a, both a chart and a map. Now a lot of people don't know the difference between a chart and a map. A map is what you use for like your road maps, things like this, and everything's visual and you have to kind of follow the paths and the roads. A chart is what people use when they can't see the visual cues, but they navigate with it using like lats and longs and radio navigation, things like this. And this one in this case is actually does both. I can plot a course, just like if I were crossing an ocean, or I can visually fly it using the landmarks listed on the chart back here. So that's my training. This is kind of my training office because I do a lot of ground schools on Zoom lately. 
I bet you've gotten used to the, the platform, I imagine. Uh, I, we have a question from our Facebook Live. Amaret asks, are there any industry-wide organizations for female pilots? Yes, uh, there we have women in aviation. We have the 99s. There's a huge international chapter, uh, which was started by Amelia Earhart back in the day. And now there's lots of chapters. I know there's several chapters in the local Houston area as well as all over the country, even international. And there's even a, uh, a virtual uh, chapter to join. Women in Aviation, they have their big events every year. It moves around. So we have, and then there's several smaller groups that have kind of broken off on that. And like I said, GIFT is a nonprofit and we are involved in all of them probably at some point. <clears throat> What about the uh, Lucy's asking, what's the youngest age someone can start flying? There is no real minimum age. If you want to get into the glider training, which is the non-power glider, someone can solo at 14, I believe, and become a licensed glider pilot at 15. In the powered industry, like what most people are familiar with the flying, we can be 16 at solo and 17 become a licensed pilot. Um, one of the things my kids actually, I soloed at 16, had to wait another year to take my check ride. My daughters did the same thing and we kind of had a rule. It's like, okay, you can't have your car until you solo and you can't own your car until you get your pilot's license. We were cruel parents, I know. <laughs> so, but I had learned to fly long before. I can remember my first official lesson when I was 12 because um, that was when I was finally tall enough to almost reach the pedals. Uh, I'm still kind of short, so I use a lot of cushions still to this day. So there's no height restrictions either. There's 12-year-olds flying planes? I don't know if I like this. Some <laughs> of them are better than us. <laughs> it's much easier to fly an airplane than it is to drive a car. I'm going to tell you, there's less idiots up there than there is on the ground. <laughs> okay, I agree with that for sure. Uh, uh, what about one of your, Lindsay's asking, what about one of your training week events? Can you tell us about those? In October in Vernon, Texas, which is on our website, we do this uh, training event. We usually 20 to 30 women get together. It's mostly ground school, but we do offer flying and discounts. We have another one in Wisconsin this year. Hopefully we get to still do it. It's in June. Um, I believe uh, the second week of June we start it. And it usually goes on for about a week. And so it's primarily the networking and the ground school. And we do some breakouts depending on where somebody is when they come from training. All the newbies will stay together in one area. Those who are maybe finishing up their license will be in another one. We get everything from never seen an airplane before to those who are working on maybe their instructors or the commercials. So there's a peer to peer as well as multiple instructors volunteering. It's all volunteers. You just pay in a, a fee that you get lunches usually included. Uh, so, I mean, imagine eight hour days, you're, you're coming in at eight o'clock and it's all about aviation for the day, but it's a week of not having to worry about who's cooking dinner and who's provide, who's picking up the kids or feeding the dog because you're there just like, so what you can do in a week is probably a month at some of these schools where you fly once a day at best. So, and it's one week and it's all women. The attendees are all women. Like I said, we have all men who do help, but we have a lot of women who volunteer too. And you mentioned uh, you're, you are likely the only pair of mother and daughter inspection author with inspection authorization. And to that note, Bob has asked in our Zoom chat, what percentage of your students come from an aviating family? Actually, it's a pretty small percentage. A lot of my people who attend have had very little experience. Maybe it was a friend or a spouse that's learned to fly. Um, but a lot of actually my younger ones, they never had a clue. So I would say right now, it's probably less than a third of my students have any background in aviation. My youngest students probably are daughters or sons of a pilot, but not always. So, but they've shown an interest and luckily we have parents who are very supportive. <sighs> Tomorrow, we've appreciated you coming and answering our questions, encouraging us to step out of our box. Houston Oasis, let's give our jazz hands or claps <laughs> in our little boxes for tomorrow. And uh, again, that's girls, it's girlsinflighttraining.org, I believe. Yes. Excellent. We'll have to check it out. And again, we thank you for coming.